Welcome to the first video in the series that we're calling Open Source Bug, where we're gonna take a classic VW Bug and convert it into a class 11 racer. What is really cool about this series is that you will be building everything and I will be providing CAD files in case you wanna make a roll cage like ours and some of the suspension parts like ours also. Let's get a few things out of the way first. All right, I am not a professional welder, engineer, auto mechanic, any of those things. You do all this at your own risk. You're expected to get your own person to inspect your welds and the engineering. Auto racing is inherently dangerous. Whatever you do is at your own risk. Okay, so all of that stuff out of the way, what I am going to be building is a car a lot like Trooper here, which we kind of wrecked just a little bit and uh, you can follow along. And like I said, I'm gonna be providing the CAD files, but there's a lot of things that you're gonna need to get before we start this build. Let's go ahead and take a walk around and take a look at some of the things you're gonna need for this build. All right, what do you need for this build? The first off is the obvious is you need a donor VW bug and not just any kind of bug either. You need one of the classics. This one here is called Trooper and it just happens to be a 1973 VW bug and it is a classic bug. What does that mean? Let's go ahead and take some looks when you go shopping for a bug, what you need to look for. First off in the very front, you can kind of see what this thing has is called a beam. You see the two swing arms, the suspension swings like this, which connects onto the, uh, the spindle down there and that's what holds the tire on and then inside here are the springs for the beam we're going to be showing you later on how we're going to raise the vehicle and put bump stops on the beam that's important that must be on the front of your vw bug let's take a look at this bug over here and it's kind of weird because it's half what you need and half what you don't when you take a look this one's just exposed a little bit better than trooper take a look at the rear suspension and you kind of see the trailing arms inside there and how the trailing arms connect to the half shafts you need to have trailing arms like these um, to work with this build. What is different about this bug is it is a Super Beetle. Even though it has the correct rear end, it doesn't have the correct front end. One of the things you can tell about Super Beetles is it kind of has this little hump in the dashboard. And when you go in under the front of the vehicle, this is what you do not want. This is a McPherson strut. And you can kind of see how it doesn't have the swing arms. It just has the spring up here. We do not want one of these when we make a class 11 bug and it will not work with the roll cage that we're gonna make. All right, so do you get a bug with an engine or without? I find that if you really wanna get a good deal, what you mainly want in a bug is a really solid body and you want a good pan. And you can probably do it without an engine. You can find somewhere else to buy an engine. But if you can get an engine like we did for Trooper, then that is a bonus. We're gonna be putting two new engines inside of Trooper and Ladybug, and it is gonna blow your mind when you see what we're getting. Here is just a kind of a quick look at how everything will eventually go together. For the most part, there'll be some changes. We put radios and some of the electrical stuff that we put in here. There's no key. We put in race seats. We use the uh, energy race seats, PRP seat belts. That's what fits in this pretty good. We'll also put in a jazz fuel cell. I'll show you that. Some of the electrical work I'm gonna change and make all that stuff better when we build Ladybug. All right, I also think that the body you get is important. This is where the stickers go and how good or bad your car looks is based on how good the body looks and i find that kind of inside here you kind of get some rust up in here if it's all rusted away i'd pass on the car that you're trying to find i think they got this car for about 1500 bucks and realize we are starting this build already with the body off of the pan but it is so easy to take these things off of the uh, the pan there's literally about 20 bolts that hold these things onto the pan so as you can see ladybug is going to be orange with some black fenders i think it's going to look amazing when it's all done we shot some primer on it it's got a whole bunch of base on it a whole bunch of clear we're gonna do a little bit of sanding on here to get out some of the orange peel out of the paint and i painted this thing right here in my barn using just a whole bunch of harbor freight stuff and i have a video on how I use all this stuff and set it up to get a paint job like this. And once it's done, this thing is gonna look beautiful. We are in the speed shop now, getting to work on the pan. Let me show you some of the things that we have in here to complete the build. First off, the pan. This is probably one of the most important pieces to get right is a pan with no rust. You'll usually find it in the bottom foot well. This one right now, is flipped upside down. You can see where it looks like maybe somebody welded in some new pan um, bottoms there or something like that, but it looks pretty good. We'll be able to use this one. It also kind of illustrates too how easily this thing connects to the body. You can see those bolt holes there and then just bolts go all the way around and hold that thing together. Really easy to take those apart and there's a lot of videos on how to do that. There are a ton of parts that'll be associated with this build. I'll go through a couple of them. A lot of them are going to be repurposed parts, which we're going to clean up and weld to and those kinds of things. And some of the things are going to be brand new parts. 
All of the links for these will be in the description below with affiliate links if it's Amazon. Again, you're not gonna pay one penny more for that, but we will get a little bit of a commission from your Amazon purchase. Let's take a look at these parts and especially some of the things that you need to start getting now since you'll be able to follow along with this build. Shocks are one of the long lead term items. Sometimes these things could take a couple weeks and sometimes a couple months. So you wanna get on this as soon as you can if you know you're gonna build it and it's also kind of a big ticket item uh, as well. Uh, these are the King Shocks. They're specifically made for class 11 such that they're legal to race with. To get these, call the folks at Filthy Motorsports. The link for these guys will be in the description below. Talk to Ben, tell him that you uh, saw us on NTD Racing and you want the same setup as NTD Racing for your King Shocks and he'll hook you up. Here's another look at the beam. I have two of them here. Here's one that's pretty much fully intact and here's one we we'll do in two beams at the same time in the, uh, the video series and we'll talk a lot about how the beams work and those kinds of things, but this is what you're gonna need to look for when you're buying a VW Bug. These are the trailing arms that you need. Now, I already have a video that shows how to trust these with these plates right here, and a link for these will be in the description below. Another video that we already have completed is how to install this torsion housing adjuster in there. You can go ahead and check that out in the link below. There are a lot of other things that you will need to purchase also. And again, links for those will be in the description below. Some of those things were affiliates for, like the fuel tank, which you'll get on Amazon. But some things were not affiliates for, for example, going to car tech to get window nets and those kinds of things. Once we get to electrical, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna be using some of the aux beam switch panels and putting in the aux beam lights. But in particular, in the description below, I'll have a whole bunch of links for all the electrical stuff that I use. It won't cost you a bunch, but over the years, this is what I have found to be the best things to do car electrical with. Since we're gonna be racing, we're gonna need race radios. We'll use the rugged race radios and in intercom, and also we're gonna be installing one of the race uh, air cleaners for our helmets. You're gonna need to get some tires. We love Milestar tires. These things are amazing. The size that we use are the 235, 75R15s, and the Patagonia All-Terrain Pros. These things have been great, and they look really good. I think these would be good on any vehicle. There are also other important tools, I think, just to have in any fabrication shop. One of the most important, I think, is a press brake. Okay, something else that you're gonna need is you're gonna need to be able to weld. You're either gonna be able to TIG weld or MIG weld. And depending on which one you're better at, I'm a better TIG welder, and I usually use this Miller Dynasty uh, 200. I like the, this is my favorite MIG welder from Harbor Freight, the Omni Pro 220. And I also have a video showing where I use the Pro TIG, I think it's a 210 or 205, uh, on welding the entire chassis for Trooper. So all of the files that I am gonna provide will only work on one of the Langmuir Systems Crossfire tables, whether it is the Crossfire Pro or like this one, the Crossfire XR. I will tell you that after using this for about five years, I think that there is no better investment for a fabricator than to have a plasma table. Links for the Langmuir Systems Crossfire table is in the description below. You will save a hundred bucks if you use code NTD Racing. Again, we're an affiliate for them, so we will also get a kickback. I think I've sold over 200 tables tables with my affiliate link and I've never heard anyone say that it was a waste of money. These are amazing tables. So we're going to get into it more but you will need to use the Bentec products to make this thing happen. Now there's two different parts of the products you can think of. This right here is the Bentec software which will allow us to do all the work on the chassis to figure out how we're going to cut it and get all the dimensioning for the chassis. This is the, uh, the chassis obviously for our race truck not for the, uh, the VW Bug, you can see how powerful this program is in making chassis. Now you can build the entire chassis that we're gonna build with this program and a couple of angle grinders. And I've shown how you can do that in a couple of videos. And this is so much more valuable. I would always go for the Bentec Pro software, a printer and a couple angle grinders. It is so much more powerful than what you can do with a tube notcher. The other part of Bentec is their CNC machines. This is the Dragon A250. We cut our Razor 200 EFI, our 24 hours of lemons car, we cut Trooper's roll cage. A good illustration of the capability of these machines if you're gonna go into production is when we built our race truck Honcho with about 115 tubes. It took about three months to cut those. But when we went to Osceola, Wisconsin to Bentec and cut the tubes for Lefty on the Dragon A400, it took three hours. Saved us literally three months of work to, uh, to get that done. The machines are awesome and definitely a great investment if you're gonna get into some kind of production. We've got this 
torsion housing adjuster. We need to go ahead and cut some parts out to get that to go into the chassis. Let's go over to the computer. Let's see how we're gonna download those files from the ntdracing.com website, and then how we're gonna put those into the Crossfire XR to cut those parts out and fabricate them. And then let's take a look at some of the other resources that we are gonna have either on ntdracing.com or on Facebook to help us with this build. Let's start with looking at some of the web pages that we'll use for this build. First, I think the easy one, if you, again, link in the description below to take you to our Facebook group. Nobody's in it right now, but uh, hopefully we'll join some folks here shortly. And I think the whole purpose of this is to drop some pictures, to show progress, ask for que ask questions if you need help with something like that or references. And then also, like, let's say you're a dude who needs a plasma cutter and there's a guy out there who has a plasma cutter and you guys want to link up. Then I think that it'd be in this group, it'd be helpful if you would say, yes, I have a plasma cutter. I can do this for you. This would be the price, and this is about how long it takes for me to get it shipped out to you so that everybody kind of knows what the prices are and that kind of thing. Because again, this is intended to be a budget build. And like I said before, if you really want it to be a budget build, build it yourself, buy your own plasma table. You will save yourself tons of money and tons of time and heartache having to order from somebody else. I think I have a video that shows how I went from I needed a tab built that was very specific. And it took me from idea to having the part in my hand cut on the plasma table about five minutes. And there's a video for that. Here's our main landing page. Go to ntdracing.com. This takes you to the NTD Racing website. There's a bunch of cool stuff on here, especially if you want to see about the team and some of the cool folks that we have on there. But if you either cl click on this open source up here or go down to open source bug uh, and click on that, it's going to take you to a login page. Now, before you can go in here and start to access files, it's going to ask you a whole bunch of stuff. You're going to have to go through a waiver process. But if you build your own, it is 100% on you. And that is what this whole thing is saying. Uh, it's going to ask you that a couple times every time you go into the open source bug uh, web page. From there, it's going to give you access to the Google, Google Drive link. And that is just the easiest way that we found to share the files. It'll give you access to all of the files. And this is just what I have right now, but this will be populated as we go through the build in conjunction with the build videos that I make. So let's just say for in this example we're working on today, we're working on the rear suspension, torsion housing adjuster, and then these are the parts that are gonna hold the torsion housing box to the bottom of the vehicle. And I just have two in here. I'm going to put a third one in here a little bit later on once I make it. It'll be that plate that kind of ties it all in together. But what does this tell you right here? This will be the side plate that goes on the side of the adjuster that I weld to kind of make the pocket that's in there. And then it says two by four. And what that is telling you is the way that I go through my metal on my plasma table is from the top left to the bottom right like you're reading a book. And so this piece, when you're, you're planning out how it's going to cut on your plasma table, it's two inches tall by four inches wide. And then the 100 tells you I'm cutting at full power and I'm cutting 100 inches per minute if you're trying, like let's say for example, you're not using a razor weld 45, you're using a different plasma cutter that has a lot more power, then maybe you would you would make that speed faster or slower. But in general, this uh, program is gonna cut at 100 inches per minute. And so you'll go ahead, and what I do is I'm gonna go ahead and put this, and I'm gonna download that one, and then I'm gonna download both of the, the programs for this one. All right, up here on the right side, I'm going to go to all my downloads, and you see I've done it already one time before. I'm going to go ahead and look at that thing in the folder. So there is my folder. I'm going to open up another folder, uh, which happens to be where I'm going to organize and save all these things. You see I put those in there already before, but in my case, it's my desktop, Plasma CNC, G-Code, open source bug. This is a torsion housing adjuster. Try to keep it as organized as you can, and then I would just highlight both of these and then drag and drop them over onto that folder. All right, and now that these two files are in the folder, we can go ahead and open up the fire control. We'll go over to upload the program. There's our program. I'm gonna double click on that. It's gonna drop it right into our fire control. In this case, it's a simple box. That, that's pretty easy. Later on, the parts are gonna be a lot more complex or we're gonna be cutting a whole bunch because you might say, I can cut that on an angle grinder. And of course you can. But later on, we're gonna be cutting like a whole bunch of tabs and a whole bunch of other things, maybe making a dashboard and those kinds of things. And it, you just, you, you can't do on an angle grinder what a plasma table can do, I promise you that. Let's cut these parts on the Langmere Systems Crossfire XR and then start welding.
This is what it kind of looks like on the bottom side when it's done. I still got a little bit of welding to do on this side. I'll do it when I flip the, the, uh, the chassis over. This will all be on the bottom. So even errors like this where I forgot to turn on the gas won't, won't be visible from the top. And once I shoot some spray paint on it, I'll look like a pro. Uh, but the big picture of things that I learned, this is being my second one. And I think the files that I put in there will fix my problem for my first one is I want to minimize the depth right here as much as I can, just so that once I run these screws all the way in, they would just clear a rock. Right now they wouldn't, but they will once they're all set up uh, in there. If it's too far down, it starts to interfere with the shifting mechanism that goes down in there. And then the next part from here, another lesson learned, these are the, the torsion springs that are going to go on there. Uh, they basically will, th this piece right here will be, I'll be putting it inside here and they'll be feeding this spline into this arm. These screws push down and that adjusts the height of the suspension. What I learned though, is you want to heat these up really hot such that these slide in easily. If they're the same temperature, it's a really hard fit, but if you heat these up, they'll slide right in. Okay, I hope you're not too shocked. There are a lot of things that we're gonna to have to get up front to make this build happen, but I think that you will find in the long run when you own the tools, then the part, the things that you're gonna make for your race cars are gonna cost you a tenth as much and you get them right away also. And there is huge value if you are a builder uh, of your own vehicle. So you might be wondering why am I running this video series this way? There are a couple reasons. First, I'm a huge fan of the Mike Rowe show. And I think when he talks about the skills gap and maybe I can be a part of that. And there might be a couple guys who learn how to work on cars and build their own race vehicles or even start their own fabrication shops. And I think that that would be amazing. Also, we're in it for our team as well. Anytime that you purchase something from the links in the description below, from Amazon or from Langmuir Systems, we get a little bit of a commission back uh, from them. And that helps us pay for all the race cars that you see here. And then finally, we are huge fans of our sponsors. We have got the most amazing sponsors uh, in Bentec, Pivot, Industrial Power, Milestar Tires. That's what we use on our race cars. And we hope that you'll choose to use those also on your race vehicles. And we'll go through all those things as we make do this build. And I think as you see things like Bentec and you get a chance to unlock all the possibilities that come from the Bentec Pro software, I think you're going to be amazed at what you can do easily in building roll cages and modifying things and those kinds of stuff in the files that I'm going to provide you. Can't wait to show you that in the next couple of videos. I got to get to it. We got a whole bunch of videos to make and I got a car to build before January. King of the Hammers where we're going to be taking Trooper and also the car that we're going to call Ladybug. Anyway, please help out the team. Like, subscribe, ring the bell for notification of future episodes. That's the only way I can guarantee you that you will see when the next build video is coming out. And that should be next week. Can't wait to see you then. Take care of yourself.